Hi, I'm Michael Gross, host of the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. May 24th, 2013 marked the 183rd anniversary of the inauguration of passenger and freight service by the B&O Railroad to Ellicott City, then known as Ellicott's Mills, Maryland. Charles Carroll of Carrollton, the last living signer of the Declaration of Independence, was guest of honor at the ceremonial laying of this stone, the first stone of American railroading. The B&O Railroad is universally recognized as the first common carrier railroad in the Western Hemisphere. Built to reach the interior of the country and keep business flowing through the port of Baltimore, it became a vital transportation link and dramatically decreased the time and cost to ship goods in comparison to the National Road and other primitive turnpikes. The B&O's first 13 miles of track ended in Ellicott's Mills, now known as Ellicott City, and the B&O's depot proved to be an important hub for commuters and goods traveling between Baltimore and points west. The completion of the first 13 miles of rail was no small feat. At a time when there were only 23 miles of rail in the entire country, 13 miles were owned and operated by the B&O and linked the rich, industrial Patapsco River Valley with the port of Baltimore. Construction of the B&O began on July 4, 1828, probably one of the most important dates in America's early history. This project was seen as so significant that the B&O and the city of Baltimore held a parade and groundbreaking ceremony on the outskirts of town. The parade included 5,000 participants and between 50 and 70,000 spectators lined the streets to watch the parade's progress. The highlight of the ceremony was the laying of a cornerstone by the guest of honor, Charles Carroll of Carrollton, the last living signer of the Declaration of Independence and the B&O's first stockholder. Construction progressed slowly and the work was hard and dangerous. Geography played a major role in the time and cost of construction. The route through the Patapsco and eventually the Potomac River valleys and over the Appalachian Mountains west of Frederick presented numerous problems to the engineers. The terrain would require cutting through hills, filling deep ravines, blasting away tons of granite and constructing massive viaducts over streams and rivers to create a surface for track to be laid. Several man-made difficulties added to the physical difficulties Mother Nature created. Disagreements over design and construction quickly arose between the board of directors, contractors, and the engineers. The board wanted large stone bridges and specified two sets of track to Ellicott's mills that required wider cuts and fills that were initially needed and increased the time and cost to complete. Stone was even used to make portions of the early track. The military engineers working on the project wanted to get the railroad up and running using less expensive wooden bridges and temporary features that would be replaced as traffic and profits justified. The directors won the argument and as a result, the time and cost of construction rose. Stay tuned for information on upcoming events at the B&O Railroad Museum. The B&O Railroad provided the first commercial transportation system between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. in 1835. The Thomas Viaduct, crossing the Patapsco River, is one of the world's greatest engineering marvels and remains today as the largest bridge of its kind and the oldest multi-stone arched bridge in the world. St. John Properties developed the nearby Troy Hill Corporate Center between these two great cities, comprising 15 acres and 150,000 square feet of office, research and development, and flexible corporate space. The historic viaduct still carries passengers and freight today just like it did almost 180 years ago. Quick and easy connections via the railroad and the nearby BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport make Troy Hill Corporate Center not just another office park, but a vibrant business community accessible to all. Based in Baltimore, St. John Properties is one of the Mid-Atlantic's largest and most successful privately held commercial real estate firms. The company owns and has developed over 16 million square feet of property in seven states.
The line to Ellicott's Mills finally opened for regular service on May 24, 1830. It took 18 months to complete and cost an average of $60,000 a mile. Work continued on a stone freight depot and on a bridge to carry the railroad over the Baltimore and Frederick Turnpike, now Main Street, in Ellicott City. Completed by August of 1830, the B&O named the bridge the Oliver Viaduct after director Robert Oliver. It had three stone arches, 14 feet wide and 20 feet high. The depot was completed in 1831 and used for freight until it was converted to a freight and passenger station in 1857. Early passengers purchased their tickets at a hotel located across the street from the depot. Work quickly bypassed the town as the B&O headed towards the Ohio River, its intended destination, a journey that would cover 382 miles and take 25 years to complete at a cost over $15 million. Ellicott City would remain an important local passenger and freight terminal on the B&O's line for many years. Today, the existing 1831 depot is a museum and the oldest surviving railroad station in America. Ellicott City Station is a short 10-mile drive from the museum's main campus in downtown Baltimore. Visitors can purchase a combination ticket to visit the station and the quaint 19th century mill town that surrounds it. I'm Michael Gross. Thanks for watching the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. Interested in learning more about the B&O Railroad Museum and Ellicott City Station? Follow us on Facebook and Twitter with daily updates on upcoming events, coupons, photographs, history, and things to do in Baltimore. You'll never be off track.